So now we deal with invocation of state responsibility and we'll be looking principally at articles 42 and 48 of the International Law Commission's Articles on State Responsibility. So our basic question here is who, or rather which states, are entitled to invoke state responsibility? So the first point is that a state that is injured by another state's wrongful act is always entitled to invoke state responsibility. So a state is entitled as an injured state to invoke the responsibility of another state if the obligation breached is owed a to that state individually or b to a group of states including that state or the international community as a whole and the breach either one specially affects that state or two is of such a character as radically to change the position of all the other states to which the obligation is owed. So let's think that through. So first, an obligation could be breached on a bilateral basis. Uh, the state that is invoking responsibility is an injured state because it's a bilateral relationship, say on trade uh, or on air service agreements. It is the only state that can be affected because there are only two parties to the obligation. Alternatively, certain collective interests might be protected um, and uh, the breach specially affects one state. It affects one state far more than any other. Um, so you might have an environmental agreement to do with say the management of a watercourse but pollution will only flow one way through the watercourse and the impact of one state's pollution on that watercourse is disproportionately felt by the next state along its path. Um, or you could have a breach of an obligation owed to a group of states, but it's of such a character as radically to change the position of all other states. So for example, um, states might come together to manage a fishery in a regional fishery management organisation. And one state through its overfishing um, efforts alone decimates the stock, reduces it almost to extinction. That one state's action would clearly radically change the position of all other states. So in those contexts, a state is an injured state and can invoke state responsibility. But non-injured states um, may also be able to invoke responsibility. Now, non-injured states may claim in respect of obligations, erga omnes, or obligations designed to protect a collective interest of states, including that of the invoking state. So in those two cases, if you're not an injured state, you can still invoke responsibility. So particularly in the case of Erga Omnes obligations, which will include uh, all use Kogan's obligations, but may include others as well, um, or in the case of collective interest obligations. However, you are limited as a non-injured state in what you can do. A non-injured state may only call for cessation of the internationally wrongful act and assurances and guarantees of non-repetition and the performance of the obligation of reparation in the interest of the injured state or the beneficiaries of the obligation breached. So you can call on the wrongdoer to cease, uh, to give assurances and guarantees of non-repetition and you can call for reparation. That's it. So the essential difference then is countermeasures. Injured states can have recourse to countermeasures, which we'll discuss in the next of these summaries. Non-injured states can only call for secession, uh, guarantees of uh, non-repetition, um, and also for reparation uh, to affected states. So they are really only able to call upon um, a state to fulfil its obligations, whereas countermeasures will enable, as we see, more direct action.